Good morning. Welcome to the update from the bunker on Sunday, the third of May. Beautiful day here. Bit, bit, bit uh, foggy, bit misty to start off with, but it's burning off now, and it's going to be a beautiful day. And uh, not sure what we're doing. Uh, probably walking around the kitchen a few times and wandering into the lounge and that sort of thing. Anyway, trust you well. And uh, yesterday, you may have seen if you follow us on uh, on sort of Facebook, we bought a house, or at least we signed the contract in France to sign a. Um, a, an agreement, a legally binding agreement to buy a house, all done electronically. So we're now uh, buying a house up in a little village called Renoing, which is up towards um, Luxembourg, a bit closer than here, over on the German border, and uh, it needs work. So if anybody's any painters, decorators, diggers, gardeners, fancy a free weekend in France, when you can, come down and you're welcome to chip in. So you'll probably see some pictures about that coming up as we go. But, uh, but a lot of people say, well, you must be mad, you must be insane, crazy, why... Are you buying a house when you're on lockdown? Uh, when, you know, because nobody else is buying a house on lockdown. Nobody else has gone, no, I'm not doing anything. i am gone into panic mode. I'm saving my money and all this sort of thing. Um, that's exactly why we've done it. Because what I found in my career, my life and my business is that sometimes going where the other people don't go is where the opportunities actually lie. And people don't, they talk themselves out of things for the wrong reasons. So I want to talk a little bit about looking for extraordinary opportunities, doing things that other people don't do or doing things that would appear contrary to popular opinion. That's where the gold lies. And uh, I remember when I was uh, I was 45 and we moved over to Las Vegas, family, everything, we sold everything, moved to Vegas. Everybody said we we're mad to do that. It was crazy. Just, and, it, and it was actually. But we moved to Vegas and uh, worked with a good bunch over there. Life was good. It was great. Um, I wouldn't want to live there in the long term, but we had a fabulous time for a couple of years and we came back to civilization. But while we were in Vegas, uh, as locals over there, we lived in a place called Summerlin, which is on the map, it's top left. And uh, we used to get tickets and invites to shows and events, this type of thing. And locals do, they want to bring the locals in and involve them in the in the nightlife and everything on the strip. So we used to go and sit in the, the bars and the cafes and restaurants and, the, and go to shows. And we used to get to know people in the bars, you know, the people who are the waiters, the servers, the, the, the bar guys and gals. And uh, as locals, you just get chatting to them and all that sort of thing. And I remember once when there was a there was a big event on and walking around this, I think I'm going to say, I think it was the Wynn. We're in the Wynn, I think it was, which is a, I mean, a fabulous hotel. We're in the Wynn and we're having a glass of champagne or something. And um, all these guys and gals are wandering around serving on tables and waiting on drinks and you know, generally looking after people at the event. And of course, when they were sort of hard work, when they were tired, they'd come and sit down and they'd talk. And because we were locals, they'd get chatting to us. Well, these uh, young guys and young gals were extremely, extremely good looking. You know, they hire them for the looks, to be fair over there. You know that. And if you're judging people on their looks only, they'd be, you know, 9.5 to 9.9 out of 10. And we just got chatting with them anyway. And I remember I said to one of the, uh, the, the gals, I said, you must get you know, lots of drinks bought for you doing what you do and you know, being in this environment. And, uh, and Lynn said yeah, the same to one of the guys. It must be great doing what you do because all these you know, opportunities and that sort of thing will pop up. And they, they both said, no, it doesn't happen because they are they're, they, they're so unattainable, so um, attractive, so on a pedestal that people don't approach them. And they, the, the guy, the guy said, "I wish somebody would. You know, I wish somebody would buy me a drink." And if not, I mean, you know, they come in for the, they, they fly in for the weekend or whatever it is, a few days, and they fly out again. And uh, he said, "It'd be great to sit down with somebody, and have, a, have a chat, and have a drink, and meet some new people." And people don't because it seems unattainable. So if you're going into any situation, not just bars and restaurants, into a situation, and you see something that is on the face of it a, a crazy thing to do, or unattainable, or something that you don't think you should do. Maybe you should. Maybe you should go for it. Maybe you should buy a house on lockdown. The reason why it's a great time to buy a house on lockdown is mainly because nobody else is. There's no competition out there. Uh, the buyer, uh, sorry, the seller of the house, uh, it's been on the market for a while. And uh, we, were, we were sort of looking at it. We were in discussions before the lockdown came along. And we waited. And, and, and he is he wants to move on. He wants to get it done, get rid and move on from it. We know that. So he's, what well, I, I suppose we call a motivated buyer. Uh, seller and we are interested buyers and put the two together we've done a deal we've got the paperwork done we've made an agreement and we're done and nobody else is doing it there's no there's no risk of us being gazumped or co offered or something like that because nobody else is doing it so if you want to get a good opportunity go where people don't go do things that would appear to be contrary to the herd that's where the opportunities are. Now, I don't, I'm not suggesting, I'm not recommending, just for clarity, you rush out and buy a house. It worked for us. Well, I'll let you know. <laughs> we can't go and see it yet. I'll let you know whether it works for us. But 
the principle hopefully works. You'll see some images and uh, photographs coming up um, over in the future. But certainly look for doing things that people don't do. That's where the opportun opportunities lie. And, and a book recommendation for you, and uh, this is not where I got the idea for buying the property from, but I think I've mentioned this one before. It's this, Alchemy, the surprising power of ideas that don't make sense by Rory Sutherland. And it just goes through some principles and ideas. Now, Rory is the, I think, the co-founder of Ogilvy, the marketing advertising company, you know, worldwide renowned. He's highly respected on, on Twitter and TEDx and his own company. Some very clever ideas there, things that he does. And, uh, you know, one of the stories, and you can look in there yourself, and I think I've mentioned it on another video, was, you know, how would, if you do a taste test on Red Bull, imagine you just, you just invented Red Bull as a drink, you do a taste test on it, What's going to, what are people going to say? Well, it tastes like petrol, it tastes like diesel, it tastes like meth. It's not pleasant, it's not nice. And so then based on that feedback, you go, you know what, put some sugar in it, make it sweeter, whatever, or make it taste nicer. And they didn't. What they did, they put a sign on the side that said, uh, do not mix with alcohol. And that pretty much did it because if somebody says do not mix with alcohol, what are you going to do? And it, it sort of dilutes the taste as well. But you know, this thing, going where people don't go, looking for contrary opportunities. Now, there are opportunities on lockdown. I'm seeing clients and other businesses do great things. I'm seeing martial artists sign new clients, uh, new students, while they're on lockdown or on a different program. I'm seeing accountants getting new business, new clients, because their service is so good, and they're winning new business, and that's working really well for them. Now, this lockdown is tough and bruising for all of us, uh, but we can do things during it that help us either survive it and sustain and make us stronger for when we get out. So look where the other people aren't. Don't follow the herd. Don't just jump in blind. I mean, you know, use your noddle, but look for opportunities. Look for gaps in the market, in the in the situation, and then you can find uh, some golden opportunities for you. So I'll keep you posted <laughs> about the house. If it all goes wrong, I might eat my words, but I, I don't think it will. We'll see. Um, we're going to go and see it when we can get out of lockdown in a couple of weeks. And I'll keep you posted. Anyway, thank you for your time. I hope that was of help and some tips and ideas for you. Have a fabulous Sunday and stay safe, stay well, stay away from people, stay at home. And uh, I'll speak to you tomorrow, which was due to be bank holiday in the UK, I think. But now it's following Friday. I think it's Christmas or something. I'm not really sure now. Anyway, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow and bye for now.